Let's stick with this, though. It's going to be a big story, I suspect, for the next couple of days in the Remain Leave uh, campaign. We're joined by UKIP's immigration spokesman, Stephen Wolfe. He's in Strasbourg. Polly Toynbee, obviously, is with me in London. Stephen Wolfe, what is your take on the ONS explanation? Well, I think, and good morning to everybody. I think these are a pretty damning uh, figures for the government. It blows out of the water two things. First of all, as everybody knows, they can't control migration coming into the UK from the European Union, but it also blows out of the water that they have any control and understanding of actually how to calculate those people working here, those people claiming benefits, as Jonathan has just said, and that what we have is a monumental failure at the heart of government in calculating and understanding one of the most important things that matter to people in the UK at the moment is, those, is that of immigration. But it seems that what has come out from the ONS, and the, and the ONS figures will be poured over, it's, uh, Jonathan Porter has, has told us it's not a complete explanation, but it does suggest that, that most of the discrepancy is explained by short-term migration. They're here and gone within a year, so they don't count on the European definition and, uh, and uh, the UN definition of migration. And that the overwhelming number of EU migrants coming here are coming here to work, not to live on benefits. I think what it does show is that the reliance on a, a group of hard-working people standing at airports with clipboards trying to assess whether people are here for the long term or not is not really the most modern way of calculating whether people stay here for the long term or work because even just a simple example, these some of those people they say are short term could come here and work for this, this year for a short term period, go home, then come back next year for work for a short term period. Are we not calculating that way? When you start analysing the fact that you're relying on clipboards rather than some form of uh, proper assessment through te new technology. We can count people going into, onto the tube. Surely we should be able to assess who, who's coming in and out of the country. And that's one of the biggest failures, and we must address that significantly. And yes, I think the argument has always suggested that those people who come from Europe do actually work in the European Union. And this will be even gr greater when we get the living wage and the £9 here will act as an even larger pull for people coming from poorer countries where wages are much lower than that figure will be drawn to work in the UK. But as we already know, only recently from the, the, the Bank of England's own uh, statistics from the European Union, where I've seen their statistics from the UN, we know that large-scale mi migration in the way that we have at the moment pushes down wages and, I know it's arguable between myself and Jonathan, causes some level of job displacement. And that is an important factor for people in an economy where we have a large amount of austerity for those at the lower end All of right. the economic ladder. Okay, Mr. Wolf, we'll leave it there. There's such a long delay on the line at the moment that it's quite hard to have a conversation with you. But I'm grateful uh, to you for turning up and answering these questions. It's early days. These figures just came out. It's very complicated. We will be pouring over them, get more detail. Uh, and, of course, we'll come back to this subject just to try and work out if we do now have a clearer picture of the NI figures and the migration figures from the EU. This is, these are figures that have just come out in the past couple of hours. Big Man Tyrone here. Make sure to subscribe to the Wicked Awesome Robin Hood UKIP YouTube website. He exposes the leftist crops on the British Brainwashing Corporation. <laughs> nice. <laughs>